talk about fears well, Let's talk about Tuesday, which means it's Ken's Key Clue in the Martha Moxley case. And uh, first off, hey, i got to give a shout out to my buddy Josh from uh, Rogers Police Department in Arkansas. He sent me this uh, nice police shirt and I appreciate that very much. So thank you. Uh, so back to Ken's Key Clue in Martha Moxley's case. Um, this is a different one, okay? Sometimes a key clue is a statement. Sometimes it's a murder weapon. Sometimes it's lack of blood in certain areas. It could be anything. Um, but this one is the crime scene itself. I, I believe the crime scene tells you a lot. And it was key for me to figuring out who more than likely was the offender in this brutal homicide of 15-year-old Martha Moxley. Um, so what is it about the crime scene that leads me to believe I can determine who the offender is? Well, the evidence will show you that Martha was attacked in her driveway initially. And you can look at the, the map of that and see blood drops on that gravel driveway. She had almost made it home. This more than likely to me occurred probably from a punch of some sort. And I think the autopsy reports uh, would back that statement up. But that's not where the, the main victimization occurred. That's where the assault started. But it looks to me as if she probably got up and ran. And she was attacked again in a different location on her property. This is where she was beaten with a golf club from the Skakel residence. Again, does it say for sure just because it was a golf club tied to that residence that Somebody from that residence did it? No. No. But always remember that it's the totality of everything. So now we have a, a second assault location where the victim is bludgeoned with a golf club. Between 10 and 15 strikes to the head. To the head of this person. Now, some people would like to classify that as overkill. Now, what's overkill? Overkill is doing more damage than needed to cause death. What does that tell you? To me, that indicates rage. Let's say, let's compare it to a, a somebody that was hired to kill somebody. I'm not even saying that is even a possibility in this case because it's not. I'm just trying to give you a comparison. There's not overkill. There's no anger involved. It's a gunshot, they move on. Strangulation, they move on. Um, stabbings, eh, not usually for that, but it could occur. But this shows so much rage and anger. Somebody was very angry at Martha 
at that particular moment in time. What does that rule out? To me, you could deduce from that a stranger. Not foolproof. But there is this inclination in this theory brought forth that some strangers who had said they were going to get a girl from that area caveman style. Tony Bryant had given this information about a black male and his white male accomplice. Although a stranger is always possible in unsolved homicides. If you look at the crime scene and do a real crime scene assessment that takes into account the area, the neighborhood, the populations, the victim, all that, in this case, it was not a stranger. This, without a doubt, was anger. Now, can I say this was or was not a sexually motivated crime based just off of the crime scene? No. And you, the reason you can't do that yet is because her, straight, her state of dress with her, she's face down in a prone position, her jeans and her underwear are pulled down past her knees, at least to her knees. By all indications, at first glance, this could very well be a sexually motivated crime. Although at autopsy, it was determined she was not raped because she was still a virgin. But that does not mean it's not a sexually motivated crime. You can't rule that out. There are many cases where a fantasy is played out in an offender's mind and for a lot of reasons they may not be able to attain an erection. Therefore, there's no penetration. But it does not mean that it's not a sexually motivated crime. So we have to look into that. And I will do that later in the deep dive. But now her state of undress gives me the possibility of a sexual fantasy and a sexually motivated crime. Although we have to couple that with the rage. This rage was so bad that the golf club snapped in half. It shattered. Do you know how hard you have to swing a golf club to shatter that? So my key clue for this case is the crime scene itself. The initial assault, the secondary assault, and then in this case we have a third location that she is drugged to. Now will we be able to determine when that happened? Was it one continuous thing? Or... Did the offender come back to that location because they were familiar with it to clean up, to finish a sexually motivated fantasy, to double check what they did maybe because of intoxication or drug impairment? I'll tell you more come Wednesday's deep dive and what I think about it. If you get a chance, I want you guys to take a look at the aerials online of where the murder occurred, where the assault began, where, where the, the blood is. You can follow it and it tells you a story of how this occurred. And it's unfortunate. It happened right, right in her driveway, right in her yard, in this secluded Bellhaven estate in this affluent neighborhood. So that's it for Ken's Key Clue on Tuesday, Wednesday, the deep dive, which everybody always waits for. Okay, can't get into it. 
I can't wait for it either, but I got more research to do every day, you know, researching, reading statements, going through crime scenes, comparing crime scenes to statistics, uh, neighborhood populations, the burglary rate in that area, the peeping Tom's police reports, were there any of that? All that ties into who the offender more than likely is. And remember, I did a video about this case a few months ago, but I wanted to check into somebody else, some other aspects. Ken Littleton. Can't leave him out. Is it a coincidence that his first night there, Martha ended up dead? And then later on in her life, his post-offense behavior became that of an alcoholic, a drug user, in and out of jail. From what I've heard, I haven't been able to verify that yet with a police report or trial transcripts yet. It's still going to be key. Have to look into that. Okay? So that's it for today. Until Wednesday's deep dive, Maine's out. I won't fear us.